Hey, good morning. Monday morning tea time with Mick. I hope your week's off to a great start. You know, one of the questions that I believe is asked often is how, the, how will the world know that we are disciples of Jesus? Well, Jesus answered that question in John 13, 35, where he said, they will know you are Christians by your love, your love for one another and your love for those out in the world. And how does that love play out? Well, I'm glad you asked. Paul the Apostle says to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he describes love and how we should live. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. Love does not delight with evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love never fails. And the last verse of chapter 13 says, and these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So the question of the hour is, how are you doing? How are you loving? Jesus goes so far as to say that we don't just love those who love us. If we do, we're no different than anybody else. He says, you have to actually love your enemies. That's a supernatural feat, is it not? It's impossible uh, without the uh, power of God's spirit in us. And so the world is dying for you and I to be a people that truly understand how to engage the world in a way that makes Jesus more attractive. Jesus was our model. He engaged over and over again and loved powerfully. Do you remember the rich young ruler? Jesus loved him so powerfully. He looked at him and, and scripture says he loved him. And he said, you're, there's one thing that stands between you and me. It's your money. He said to the woman at the, at the well, the Samaritan woman, the half breed, he said, uh, you need healing. You've gone from man to man to man, but I see you and I value you. Come, let's bring spiritual healing to you. To, to the tax collector Zacchaeus, he said, enough with your evil. He loved him enough to tell him the truth. And Zacchaeus re repented from his sin. And he loved Nicodemus to answer the most important question of all time. How may I live forever? He said, you must be born again. Yet Jesus always saw people. He saw them, he valued them, he loved them. We are to do the exact same thing. He loved us so much that he walked in our shoes. Scripture says he came from a perfect place in union with his father and dwelt among us and understands everything about us. And though he did this, he never kept his eyes off of the eternal perspective of his mission. So the question of the hour also for you and I is simply this. Are we willing to walk in the shoes of others? Are we willing to walk in the shoes of those who are hurting? the single mom that's struggling, uh, the husband or wife that lost their, their child or their spouse and are grieving incredibly, the one that's just going through a divorce or the one that's in addiction. Are we willing to come alongside one that's got the, the uh, issues of physical disease that is taking control of their bodies? Yeah, it's messy. Yes, it will cost us something, but if we're going to win the world, we have to see people value them and we have to value them more than their opinion. Catch that. We value them. We don't have to agree with their opinion or their ideology, but we are to love them regardless. That's what scripture tells us. And the reason behind that is that everyone is made in the image of God. We are image bearers of God. Therefore, we have value and we can disagree and we don't have to uh, truly see eye to eye on everything, but we can love them authentically. And that will give us a bridge to be able to have them have an opportunity to know Jesus. And the only way we're going to ever be able to express um, the love that 1 Corinthians 13 says is that we have to first receive the love of God in our lives. God loves you. Have you experienced that today? He loves you. And once you've experienced the true, authentic outpouring of the love of God, it will automatically flow from you to love others. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brothers. So what do you say? Let's go and love the world the way Jesus did. Because he loves you. He always has and he always will. He goes before you and behind you. And absolutely nothing can take you out of his hands. I do pray you have a blessed week. And to this truth I say, all right and amen.